اشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله اما بعد اعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم i bear witness that there is none worthy of worship except allah and i bear witness that muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam is his prophet and messenger dear viewers assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh May the peace and blessing of Allah be upon you. Welcome to our program Islam for Children being brought to you by MTA from our London studios. Today we are going to discuss an important topic and that topic is loving your neighbor. In every religion, let's take Christianity for example. I think it's one of the tenets in order for anyone to be a Christian or to be accepted within Christianity you must love your neighbor what does islam say about our neighbors with me here in the studio i've got a number of children who have joined in with me to discuss this topic but before we go into the details of the topic of our, the topic we're discussing today i will request a bidah to recite a portion of the holy quran for us please أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم واعبدوا الله ولا تشركوا به شيئا وبالوالدين إحسانا وبذي القربى واليتامى والمساكين والجار ذي القربى والجار الجنوب والصاحب بالجنب وابن السبيل وما ملكت ايمانكم ان الله لا يحب من كان مختالا فخورا well uh, thank you very much for that wonderful recitation can I request Fatima to give us a translation of the portion that has just been recited? In the name of Allah, the gracious, ever merciful, and worship Allah and associate not with him, and show kindness to parents and to kindred and orphans and the needy, and to the neighbor that is a kinsman, and the neighbor who is a stranger and the companion by your side, and the wayfarer, and those whom your right hand possess. Surely Allah loves not the arrogant and the boastful. Thank you very much for that wonderful translation. And of course, having listened to the Quran itself, I would love to have also a hadith, sayings of the Holy Prophet This is Islam for children, and the main sources for our teachings or for Islam, primarily it is the Quran itself, then it is the sayings of the Holy Prophet and his sunnah. Now I'm going to request Amatul to, re to recite a hadith for us. Amatul, can you recite the hadith, please? Allahumma salli ala Muhammadin wa ala Ali Muhammadin kama salli ala Ibrahima wa ala Ali Ibrahima inna ka hamid majid. Allahumma barak ala Muhammadin wa ala Ali Muhammadin kama barak ala Ibrahima wa ala Ali Ibrahima inna ka hamid majid. Whoever believes in Allah and the Day of Judgment should not put his neighbour to inconvenience. Whoever believes in Allah and the Day of Judgment should treat his guests with respect. Whoever believes in Allah and the Day of Judgment should only say that which is good or else remain quiet. Thank you very much for the translation. Now children, thank you very much. Today we are discussing our neighbours. Who is a neighbour? Yes, give the mic to Hasna. Who is a neighbor, Hasna? You don't know? Give the girl in front. A person that's next door. The person that is next door. Anybody else? Tahir? A person who's next door and he's kind to you every day. Kind to you. Now, you can have different definitions of a neighbor. But God has explained to us, God has told us exactly who a neighbor is. Now children and viewers at home, welcome once again. 
we are here to discuss the topic, loving your neighbor. It is one of the fundamentals for the Christians. And we Muslims, we've been taught by God the Almighty what we should do in relation to the neighbors. It is so important a topic that the Holy Prophet وسلم, says that Jibrael, Gabriel the angel, has been giving me commandments or telling me about neighbors so much so, he has put this so much emphasis on neighborhood that I thought that maybe the neighbors might be included amongst those who must even receive from what people leave, from the property which we leave behind when we die. They might be included within the will. Neighbors are your brothers and sisters in the house. Neighbors are the people living next door, like you said. Neighbors are your schoolmates. Neighbors, if I expand it a bit, a bit further, are not only your classmate or your schoolmate, but even those schools around you. They're your neighbors. We share a common purpose, don't we? But it's so bad that in, in your schools, sometimes even the police has to be there when you are getting out of school in case you attack each other. Neighbors, we have to treat them nicely. We don't have to fight them. We don't have to abuse them. You welcome, you respect them, you treat them with respect. Now, the Quran has explained that even somebody who is just walking, a wayfarer, somebody you don't know, you meet in the road, someone you meet on the bus on your way to school, if you use buses, someone you meet on the train, when you, whether you're going to school or elsewhere. Once you are sharing that journey, it becomes your neighbor. You are flying anywhere, someone sits next to you on the plane, that's your neighbor. You are in your schools, person sitting next to you is your neighbor. And even those in other classrooms, they are your neighbor. Neighborhood starts there. That's, how, that's the beauty of Islam. It starts from the home environment, that your brother and sister is your neighbor. Your mom is your neighbor, your dad is your neighbor. Your next door neighbor is your neighbor. Then it goes on and on, it expands. The circle grows wider and wider. The world today, it has become a global village. We now have to live together in a society, in one society. But we all share a common purpose. In schools, the purpose is you want to be educated, to become better people in life. And when you, as you grow up, then you meet other circles in your environment. So the person working with you in the office becomes your neighbor. So you see where I'm coming from. If you are living in this country, UK, all the countries next to us, they become our neighbors. And we must treat them well. So now, children, your neighbors at your stage, let me put much emphasis on the home environment. We share everything in the house. We have to sit, maybe we are here sitting in the lounge, we have, to, we have to be in the sitting room. Maybe somewhere else in the house. We have to share with them. Once you begin to share with your brothers and sisters within the house, then you can walk out and then share with, the, with others who are outside your house. And if you are good to your brothers and sisters, you will be good to the neighbors. The parents will even let you go out to those neighbors if they are good, and it happens. Doesn't it happen? Thank you very much. You were all telling me that you have friends in your neighborhood. You love your neighbors, don't you? Do you love your neighbors only and you don't love those who sit with you in your school? Or you love them as well? You love them because they are your neighbors. You have to move with them. You have to study with them. You have to live with your neighbors. Now, children, the Quran puts it a bit higher. The bar is raised up a bit for us. It can be easy to be friends with those who, st who study in your school. It can be easy to be okay with those who live near you. But it's very most difficult, the most difficult thing is to come in terms with somebody you don't know, a stranger. You come to a mosque, for example. We all go to mosques, don't we? Yeah. And once you're in the mosque, what happens there? 
we stand, we stand next to each other, don't we? In the mosque. So when you are praying, that person next to you becomes your neighbor. And there is a way you must treat them. You have to behave good. But if your background from the homes we live in, if we don't behave well, your habits are going to show. You can't hide them. Habits are very, very strange, especially with kids. You can't hide your habits. So I'm requesting you politely. As I'm teaching you, I'm praying for you as well. Love your neighbors. And the first ones are those within your household. Your brother, your sister, your mom, your dad are the neighbors number one. Then stage number two, when we take it further, is those we meet on, as we travel and those who we don't know at all. They are all our neighbors. All human beings in that sense, it means they are our neighbors and we have to work with them, we have to be with them, we have to share with them. Now, viewers at home, thank you very much for following our program. We hope you are enjoying our programs. Uh, please stay tuned. Um, we've been discussing the topic, loving your neighbor. Now, viewers at home, thank you very much for watching. And I thank everyone here in the studio who has joined in with me to discuss today's topic, which is loving your neighbor. Now, before we carry on with our topic, I would like to ask those who are watching. I've got a quiz for you. And the quiz is, in the hadith of the Holy Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and this hadith is narrated by Abu Huraira, he says that he had this hadith from the Holy Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam himself. The Prophet said, I testify in the name of God, he does not believe. I testify in the name of God, he does not believe. He said it another time, a third time. I testify in the name of God, he does not believe. The Holy Prophet Muhammad وسلم, was asked by the people who were around him that, O Prophet of God, who is that who does not believe? He gave an answer. Keep watching. The answer to that question will come at the end of our program. Thanks for watching, and I hope maybe we get the answer from the audience as well. Thank you very much. The answers will be revealed at the end of the program. Now, we move on with our, dis our discussion today, loving your neighbor. I'm trying to explain this, this a little bit more, loving your neighbor. The Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, as he lived in Medina, he was, no, he was not receiving good treatment from his neighbors. Yet for him, his response was a good response. He was treating them well. He did not treat badness with badness. Instead, it was with goodness. And I'm going to tell you something that happened and is very, very amazing. There was this lady in Medina who used to throw rubbish. And remember, he used to put stumbling blocks in the, in the way of the Prophet And then another one, he came, there are two ladies, but I won't tell you about the second one because you've heard so much about the first one. Now I want you to learn about another one who I think maybe might be new for some of you here. The lady was walking, to in, was walking in, into Mecca, but before he walked, she walked into the city, she was told that, be careful, when you get into that city, there is a man who is a magician. Stay away from him. You can get his spell. He can put his spell on you. And then the lady, as she was walking into the city, she met the whole prophet, incidentally. She was carrying the luggage. The prophet took the luggage of, of, of her and carried the luggage for her up to the city and then took her where she was going. After entering the house, slightly before 
the destination. She said, I've been told there's a man in this, in this city. That man is very dangerous. He's a sorcerer. He's a magician. He, he, can, spell, he can cast spell on you. He's a bad man. Do you know who he is? Do you know where he lives? They just, the Prophet Sallallahu just smiled and just cried the Lord for the lady. But as he put the Lord down at the end of the journey, he gave the answer to the lady. Say, you remember you asked me a question on our way here? Who the sorcerer was, who the magician was in this city, Medina. That man is me. And then this won over the heart of the lady herself. Now, from Mecca, the Prophet Wasallam went to Medina. And the persecution and the suffering also followed. But around him, he lived with Jews. He lived with Christians. And again, when he was facing trouble in Mecca before moving to Medina, his neighbors, who were not Muslims, they're Christians. In Africa, where most of us come from, they welcomed him as they were being persecuted. And in Medina, he came. Who welcomed him in Medina? There were even Christians. The Jews and the Muslims, they lived together in peace. And I think that is another example that we can live together in peace without any trouble. So whether in you, in, you are in your schools or anywhere you go in life, you're going to meet people with different beliefs, different faiths. But interfaith is so important. We are all the same. We all believe in God. It's just a question of how do you believe in that God. But we can coexist. We can live together without discrimination. So I request most of you who are here, inshallah, to watch your neighbors, to look out for your neighbors, to help your neighbors, those you know and those who you know whom you don't know at all. Now, children, we are discussing the topic about our neighbors, about loving our neighbors. Everybody of you here knows now who our neighbors are. Now, I'm going to tell you a little story regarding the treatment of neighbors. And that story is not from me. I don't make up stories. I enjoy what the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said. So this, pro this story is from the sayings of the whole Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And the story is, the story is, one time people went for Hajj. And in that group of those people who went for Hajj, there was this saint, this good person of Allah who used to re receive revelation from Allah, he could get dreams. And his dreams were becoming true, true dreams. So he saw in a dream as he was performing his hajj that all the people who came for hajj this year, their hajj has not been accepted. And he was amongst them. He went to the Kaaba again, he prayed, oh my God, I'm here, I thought I'm okay, what have I done wrong? to be amongst those who, whose hajj has not been accepted. God, forgive me. Forgive us all. Accept our hajj. Then, when he, he went back to sleep again, he saw another dream. And then God said, what I mean is, I would not have accepted anybody's hajj this year, but I have accepted your hajj, I have accepted your actions, all of you who have done your hajj for my sake, simply because of one man. And that man is not amongst you. He has not come for hajj. He has not appeared. He is somebody who did not even manage to come and join them. That somebody had a neighbor, and the neighbor wasn't a Muslim, and he was a Muslim himself. But like we are studying, we treat our neighbors well. Sometimes we walk into their houses. So the, the wife was pregnant. And then the wife asked, I'm hearing a very good smell coming from our neighbors. What have they cooked today? It's a nice smell. Can you go and ask them? Maybe they should give us some of their food for today. 
and the husband walked into the next, next door neighbor. They had a good, close working relationship, a good relationship. So can, I, can, can we have some of your food today? And you guess what the neighbor said? He said, no, 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 he didn't say yes. He said, no, I can't give you my food, but it's good, it's, it's for my wife actually. You know, the smell is, you know, she's pregnant, she needs this, can I take some food for my people home? I need some of yours, please. I wouldn't have come, I've never asked. And the person said, please, no. Uh, then ask, why not? And he said, no, this food, I know you're a Muslim, you're my neighbor, it's not halal for you. What happened was, as I was walking ar uh, along the bush, I found a dead animal, brought it home, and I cooked it for our consumption today. But it was dead. And you Muslims, you are not allowed to, to eat dead animal. It was even actually not very good. It was a little bit rotten, but I had no choice. The meat had gone off a bit. So it's not halal for you, but for me it's okay. For us it's fine. Then that person walked back to the house and told the wife, very sorry, I can told, told her the story, the full story, as it went. Then when he realized that the next door neighbor is in this dire need of just a simple thing which is called food, he sacrificed all his money he had prepared to go for Hajj. Instead, he canceled the journey, he did not go Mecca, he did not go Hajj, took all the money and gave it to the neighbor. So, he said, thank you for telling me the truth. But you have helped me so much, I want to give you this money to help you out. I can't, I, was, I had prepared this money and I prepared these provisions for my journey for Mecca, but having learned about your situation in this house, I can't leave my neighbor in this situation and go to Mecca. I give you this, Take it away. But how many can do that in the society we live in today? But you, as growing up children, these are the virtues we want to instill in you. These are the good manners you have to grow up with, knowing that a neighbor must be treated very, very well. Because of that man who treated a neighbor very well, who was not in Mecca, became the source of acceptance of all the prayers and the salat which were being performed in Mecca, the most holiest place. So now I hope you understand how important it is to treat our neighbors well. I hope and pray that you will be able to treat your neighbors well, who you already know now, by now, and I hope myself I'm able to treat my neighbors well. Now, ladies and gentlemen, before the end of our program, you remember we had a question and I'll be revealing the answers at the end of the program. But before we do so, for those of you viewing us from home, we've been discussing the topic about loving our, your neighbors, about our neighbors. We have learned what the Quran teaches us about neighbors. We've learned what the Prophet Sallallahu himself taught about how we should treat our neighbors. I hope the story of that particular man who went to Mecca and then God showed him a dream, a nice dream, about a person who was not with them, who was far away looking after their neighbors, who God loved so much more than this biggest crowd which had gathered for his sake. So there are also some individual efforts we can do, individual sacrifices which we can do and then God accept them. And once he does, he might accept those for the entire world. So may Allah make us a source of peace, a source of comfort, and a source of God's acceptance for other people's prayers and other people's actions. Well, viewers at home, thank you very much. You remember at the beginning of our program, we had a quiz for you asking who is that person? Who is that person who doesn't believe? The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was asked three times 
and he gave an answer. The answer was, he whose neighbor is not safe from his mischief is that misfortunate person. Well, everybody who has participated in this program, thank you very much. Thanks for watching. Thanks for your good answers. And those of you who recited, who translated, and those working in the background, we thank you very much for all your efforts and all your sacrifices you've done for the sake of Allah. Today we've been studying and been discussing about loving your neighbor. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has taught us not to be mischievous to our neighbors, not to be bad to our neighbors. You remember, he was asked three times, who is that, who is that? And he said, he whose neighbor is not safe, he who is receiving mischievousness from a person, that person who is emitting bad stuff to their neighbors, those who are harming their neighbors, they are very misfortunate. I hope we won't be mischievous, we won't be bad to our neighbors, so that we, we receive God's blessings and so that we are able to act in line and in accordance with the teaching of Prophet Muhammad <coughs> We work in lines of the teaching of the Quran and in accordance with the teaching of the Holy Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Well, viewers, that's all we have time for today. You have been watching Islam for Children being presented from MTA Studio in London. We've been discussing neighbors. We can't carry on with our program, unfortunately, but inshallah in future, we might continue on the same topic or other aspects of the same topic could be discussed. And please join us again, inshallah, on the same program. Thank you for watching. May peace and blessings of Allah be upon you all. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. We hope we see you again. Thanks for watching. Jazakumullah khair.